Hey everybody, on this episode of Steve Tech, I'm going to talk to you about sleeves, the different type of sleeves, uh, what we're doing with them, how they go in, what the installation is, and what their main purpose is. So i got three different, really exotic, different uh, sleeve setups for you to take a look at. So first, let's look at the, um, uh, the general repair sleeve that you do in an iron block. Okay, so if we look right here, this is an LSX block. And uh, when you lean on these things too hard, I promise you, you're going to crack a cylinder. And that's exactly what we do. So what it does is it'll crack the cylinder up here into the water jackets. You can't really see it, but we do have it machined out already. And obviously, leaks water. So what we're going to do is we take a repair sleeve. So this is just a straight, simple repair sleeve. This is an eighth inch wall, uh, straight, has a taper on the bottom. And what we do is we bore the hole to be one thousandths to two thousandths at most they usually try to be one thousandths tight interference to put this sleeve in the hole now we just put this one in because this one broke two cylinders okay so you'll see down at the very bottom of the cylinder right down there you'll see that is a step now so we machine the hole or machine the bore all the way down and then leave the step register for the sleeve to go in and sit on it. So it hits like a sleep step right there. So when the head gasket, as as we put the uh, head on it, head gasket, anything else that's on top of this, pinches it down, pushes it up against the bottom of the sleeve, and then the sleeve can't go anywhere. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have a shop that just goes all the way through and then puts the sleeve in, just relies on the press of the sleeve in order to keep the sleeve in place. That doesn't work. Uh, with head gaskets, especially with anything with O-ring, it'll end up pushing the sleeve down and then the thing all of a sudden doesn't seal. So we have that ledge down there, a thousandths press. We press this sleeve in there. We'll hit it with, uh, a lot of times we can put uh, liquid nitrogen in it and we can shrink the sleeve, slightly heat up the block, or a lot of times we just beat this thing in with a hammer. It's only a thousandths press or so, so we can do that. Now one thing that you're always going to notice when we do this this type of repair sleeve we put something in here into a thousand smaller hole regardless of whatever happens it makes this hole and this hole right beside it out of round promise you it does it will period because we're putting something in there that's forcing the hole out just like this and it has to go somewhere so it'll always make this cylinder out of round so you always be prepared that you're going to have to end up honing a thousandths or two more out of these other holes in order to get these things back to being round. Okay, so general repair sleeve, straight, uh, no step, nothing like that, just fixing a crack, sealing that up from behind. Now the thing about an uh, eighth inch wall sleeve like this is that ultimately in big horsepower stuff, you know, a, a thousand horsepower and below really doesn't matter. But in bigger horsepower stuff, it will end up giving up the ghost. So I'm, I'm never going to end up selling this block for anything more than 1,500 horsepower because there's a crack behind the sleeve. Even though the sleeve is perfect and brand new, I'm not going to put uh, any horsepower to this because uh, already on this one, I already had this sleeve. Uh, we sold this to another customer, and uh, he ended up leaning on it pretty hard, and it cracked the sleeve because there was a crack and no support from behind it. So give you an idea of how thick cylinder bores need to be. So that's an eighth inch, 125 wall. So you need to be really thick, as thick as possible. We'll talk about that here in just a second on another one. So the next kind of sleeve that we have is called a step sleeve. Now you can see that there's a step right up here. So instead of putting a register down in the bottom, then we end up having to machine a counter bore in the top so uh, most all the uh, drag race stuff my SMX uh, Hemi's uh, most all blocks that aren't a wet sleeve will have some form of step if it's in aluminum because we don't put a sleeve down or a step down at the bottom we actually make this register make this counter bore that's this, this height and this diameter so the sleeve goes in and then it captures it and keeps it uh, in place right here so the head gasket and the head come on they bolt it down and then it all pinches together right here and holds it all in place in the deck surface okay now that's a really good way of doing it I'll show you on uh, uh, my SMX on how this is the best way of doing it in my personal opinion 
Um, so we can do that and then there is what we call a mid sleeve. Now this is a wet sleeve or also known as a, like a darton mid sleeve. Other people make these sleeves and these ones are fairly complicated because where it registers is right here. So it goes down, it needs to seal up around this area here. So there's still a bunch of material in the block here. This is all completely open. Water flows around the outside of the sleeve, uh, has a slight, real small channel to try getting a little bit of water through here, um, which is marginal in my opinion. And uh, then it has water comes up through the outside of the sleeve right through these holes right in this area all right so water comes in goes around the sleeve comes up through the holes and then you have to modify the cylinder head so that the that these passages are all transferring water up into the cylinder head if it's a if it transfers water and it's not a dry deck deal okay uh, I prefer to do these things in dry deck because uh, when these blow ahead gasket they still suck and they still spray water out everywhere so as to show you the block that these need to go into and the other reason why I'm not a big fan of a mid sleeve design we can go over here to this LS block now this is a billet LS block really nice piece and in this uh, uh, 2000 horsepower and below I think they're pretty decent in fact 2000 is like the max that I would ever want to put in these things and this is just from experience of what I've seen happen with this in particular block and others so this sleeve will go into the hole and you see that my biggest problem with these is this is the bottom register that the sleeve sits in and then the sleeve sits right on this ledge right here. Then with the cylinder head clamps it down forces it into here. That I don't have a problem with that's not a real big deal. But you notice there's nothing up here. Nothing up here. All it does is have sleeves that come in an interlock well there's nothing that is there's nothing that holds this block from you know you could hit this with a hammer and just knock it right out there's nothing that holds this here except the head bolt one small head bolt um, I don't like it because I want to have all this deck surface all uniform solid as much as possible with with a sleeve top because what I've found is that these sleeves when they're like this in a wet sleeve design or a mid sleeve that I just can't get this gasket ring to stop uh, leaking because you can't really see it here but there's nothing that really I mean it's it's registered yeah yeah I understand it's just there's really nothing there that is capturing supporting and clamping everything all together in one solid unit and so I've always had gasket problems with these because the top of the sleeves move, moves around like this. I mean, this is over exaggerated, but it only takes a thousandth or two thousandths of movement in here to eventually uh, brunel that gasket and just make the thing go like this. Then all of a sudden this thing's leaking. So I'm not a big fan of this. If this thing makes, uh, you know, 1500 horsepower in that range, 15, 16, 17, it's probably not a big deal. Nice wet jacketed block. Um, I did do this differently my replacement sleeves because I don't want to have the water coming up through here because I'm going to dry deck this. I've made these solid. So there's no longer going to be any water that comes up through the deck surface at all. You can see here that there's even a little bit of passages right there and right there. Now we're going to block all this off and just run this and figure out a, a better way of doing this and making this more solid deck and just not running any water in between the head gasket so nothing if it ever does blow a head gasket it doesn't spray water all over the place okay the ultimate way of doing it what i feel and what have been proven out this is my smx block now these sleeves here are a step sleeve you can see that they do interlock there is aluminum material in between but i have no water that comes up through here whatsoever none okay and what this does is there is quite literally uh, half an inch of material behind the sleeve all the way around the board with the thickness of the sleeve so you're looking at nearly a uh, little over half so half so it's almost three quarters of an inch thickness all the way around now this is this is water jacketed this is my deal 
this whole thing is water jacketed. We don't care about running water in between the cylinders. Uh, we just need to have mass of water all the way around the cylinder. We don't ever bother going in between because you can't, you'd have to make this motor so large, physically long, in order to get water through there and still have thickness in the material. So if we move that out, it would, you know, the bores would end up, it'd be making this block probably an inch and a half, two inches longer, just in order to get material behind there to make this area of the sleeve strong enough to run water in between it. So that's why this is a still a Siamese uh, bore. All blocks, all race block stuff is Siamese except for that mid sleeve deal. They try to still run some stuff through there, but there's no contact, nothing's really pressed or put together. It's just as like this. Okay? So this, in my opinion, is the best way of doing this. Uh, no water through here. Everything is solid. This is a solid piece uh, material all the way through here. I mean, this uh, there is uh, about three quarters of an inch of deck deck thickness through here before it gets into any water passage. Then it has three quarters of an inch total thickness of cylinder bore sleeve around it. But all to put that sleeve in there. Now, the one thing that you're going to see also is sleeve protrusion. You don't see any sleeve protrusion on an iron block. Uh, you probably could if you sleeved all eight holes and you left the sleeves up, uh, but you'd have to only do that on a copper head gasket. Because if this sleeve right here is literally, the protrusion means that the, this sleeve surface right here is actually above the deck surface, like that. So pretend my finger is the deck surface, it's actually up. I put them up anywhere from three to five thousandths higher than what the deck surface is. So on an iron block, especially if you're going to use a comedic style head gasket, multi-layer steel or anything like that, you definitely don't want to have any sleeve protrusion. You just want to have these sleeves installed, just like where we are here. Then we put it back up in the machine, we resurface this, make everything pinched down perfectly tight, or perfectly flat, and then uh, this sleeve has been pressed all the way down to the bottom register when the head gasket comes on and the head comes on it comes down and clamps everything together in these sleeves doing the exact same thing but we're leaving this slightly up so we leave this up five thousandths of an inch so on this block on my SMX stuff these sleeves are actually sticking above the deck surface five thousandths probably can't see that on the camera but they're all sticking up five thousandths. That's the way we machine the block. This is why we do these sleeves. Now in these sleeves too, these have uh, less than half a thousandths of press. So I can actually pull these sleeves out and put new sleeves in just like a top fuel car or something like that. So we'll replace the sleeve and piston rod assembly if we ever had to, uh, just like the top fuel cars do. And don't have to worry about this sleeve, changing the sleeve and making this one out of round, this one out of round, because the block is so sturdy, so thick through this area, and we don't have any press per se in here, just very, very minimal, just to make sure that we get good surface contact, and that's it. Now, back to this protrusion thing, so these are five thousandths up. When you put a copper head gasket on this surface, these sleeves, with the O-ring, this is our SMX hoop program, so the receiver groove is in the top of the sleeve, we have the O-ring, the stainless steel one-piece hoop that's in the head. And that goes down, the sleeve, the O-ring goes into, the SMX hoop goes into the receiver groove, pinches all together, and this 5,000 extra protrusion just kind of burnells and digs itself into the gasket. That's why you can't do this with a, uh, a multi-layer steel. You can only do this with copper. So everything, the copper just kind of forms to it and molds into it along with that stainless steel uh, SMX hoop. So this is what we found. This is uh, still current technology in uh, top fuel stuff, pro, most pro mod stuff. This is the way I prefer to do it. Uh, since we don't run any water up here, even though this is fully water jacketed block and heads for the SMX, uh, I don't even put any sealant on it because you don't need to. But if you were doing this on something else, uh, like a Brodix block or a dart block, something that was a cast piece that had sleeve protrusion. Uh, we just put sealant all the way around to seal up the head gasket, but this will Brunel dig right into that head gasket. 
The other thing that you're going to want to do on when, especially if it has sleeve protrusion, is heat cycle it, do a retorque, do a retorque again after it heat cycles. Haven't found too many problems with uh, retorquing things a lot. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Heat cycle it, retorque it. Heat cycle it, retorque it. It's going to be fine. But that's on copper with something that has a protrusion with a sleeve sticking up. So here are your, those are your three main sleeve ways of doing things this is obviously the billet uh, best way of doing it in my opinion uh, this is the normal repair sleeve so most of you guys if you have a broken block you crack the cylinder or something they're gonna put a sleeve in just like this make sure the register is on the bottom the sleeve is all the way down because the sleeves not all the way down to the bottom they resurface this put the head gasket on with a head it'll push that sleeve down in about 15 seconds later it starts leaking and blowing compression across it so make sure that sleeve is all the way down make sure it's seated on the bottom and then then resurface this you can use a multi-layer steel gasket copper gasket whatever you like to use and then you have the mid sleeve design so you ever hear the the, the term mid sleeve that's what they're talking about this is realistically what ends up needing to happen here uh, in my opinion uh, they don't do this in the typical pro mod uh, typical definitely not typical uh, nitro methane stuff uh, it is just it's not the in my opinion just not the best way of doing it too much stuff there's nothing here supporting all this and keeping it all together and now that matters so anyways that's the uh, the logist of what we have for sleeves how they're put in the these mid sleeves have no press at all the uh, only like a half thousandth press just enough to make good surface contact on like the SMX or Pro Mod Hemis, Nitro cars, anything like that. That's why they're changing sleeves at the track, leave the block in the car, change the sleeve and piston rod assembly at the track. Uh, and then repair sleeves, which would be the majority of what you guys are working on. So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna repair this. We'll put this other sleeve in. We'll machine these down. We'll then go in and machine the board to size, deck it to size. And this thing will be plenty good for 1500 horsepower and below. But uh, I really don't even like using these uh, LSX blocks for over 1500 horsepower anyways, because eventually they just do seem to break. I think they're just a little thin up there. But anyways, uh, I hope that was good for you guys. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, tell your friends. Uh, if it's good information for you and teaching you something that you didn't know before, uh, this is the way we really do it. This is how it's done. And, uh, you know, share that with others and uh, get other people to subscribe. Anyways, I'm Steve Morris, Steve Tech. Have a great day.